Good afternoon, Judge Rogers. Good afternoon, Chief Justice. Let me put to you the, the, the well, no, is it a question? Let me afford you the opportunity I've afforded others. Why you? T take your time. Why you? I'm a very diligent person. I prepare very thoroughly for hearings. That means I can engage properly with legal representatives during a hearing, assist in focusing issues, and it also assists me then to produce judgments promptly, which is something I do. Secondly, I believe I have been unfailingly courteous as a judge. I think courtesy in everyone, with everyone one deals with, whether it's the lawyers or witnesses or court staff, um, is absolutely imperative. I think it's an important judicial attribute and it enhances the esteem in which members of the public hold the administration of justice. Thirdly, in regard to appellate courts, uh, I think I am a good team player. I may not be regarded as the most sociable person on the bench, but I deal very easily with colleagues. I have very good relationships with them. In the nearly four years that I've been on the Western Cape High Court, I have not had a single unpleasant incident with any colleague, um, no bad relations. When I've served on appellate panels of the Western Cape High Court and in the Competition Appeal Court, I have always been able to deal easily with my colleagues, debate issues openly. I am not possessive about judgments if I'm the drafts person and take contributions and suggestions um, in very good spirit. If somebody else is the drafts person, I convey my opinions um, in a way which I believe never gives offence and I don't try to imprint myself on somebody else's judgment. Fourthly, in regard to the Competition Appeal Court, which is a specialist appellate tribunal, I think it is an important or at least very useful attribute that a judge should have experience and expertise in competition law. I practiced for some years when I was at the bar in the sphere of competition law. I acted both for the Competition Commission and for private firms in a number of large cases before the tribunal and also in the Competition Appeal Court. And I believe I can bring that um, experience and expertise to bear if I were appointed to the Competition Appeal Court. I have also had now some experience in sitting on that court. Um, I have sat in about eight cases, I think, over the last two or three years. I know Judge Davis very well and can work very easily with him. Uh, he actually lectured me at university and we've had a lot to do with each other even before I was appointed to the Western Cape bench. And finally, I think it is difficult just through self-discipline to carry on the work of a judge that can't always see you through. I have a very deep interest in the law and I believe a passion in the administration of justice and to see it upheld in the eyes of litigants, lawyers and members of the public. And I believe that has also played its part in enabling me to do my work at least thus far to what I think is quite a high standard. Thank you, Judge Rogers. Uh, Judge President Davis? Yeah, perhaps let me start off by saying I certainly think you're being a bit modest in relation to the point about your collegiality. You've been a wonderful colleague to all of us on, 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 um, on that court. Um, but I want to actually start perhaps by asking you uh, this. Um, you're somewhat unusual in the sense of all the people that have come through, including myself for that matter, uh, that you practiced for quite some years in, 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 in a number of very complicated, as I understand it, competition matters. I think both for the for the commission and on the other side? I yes. And that included cases like the Mittal case, the excessive pricing case. I know you're smiling because we had a a rather robust exchange in the middle of that, but the truth is, that is so. Yes, I acted in that case. I was not in the tribunal, but I was brought in as part of the team for Mittal in arguing the appeal. Um, in the tribunal, one of my first cases was the liquor merger between Distel and SFW at a time when 
I had to learn not only about competition law, but liquor, because I was a teetotaler then. <laughs> uh, yes, well, uh, <laughs> I, I can confirm that uh, after hours we've had a drink. Um, uh, could, I, could I then also, the Sussel case, which was the second excessive pricing case, I know you couldn't sit in it, because my understanding was at some point you were actually counsel, in the, uh, you had given advice. Yes, I had led the Sassel team until shortly before the hearing started in the tribunal. There was a postponement of the tribunal hearing, and between that time and when it came on in the tribunal, I was appointed to the High Court. And just, just a, one or two final questions uh, from, from our side. I, I noticed that in the, in the, in the uh, um, documents, you've put the McNeil case. Yes. But you have mentioned that you've done a string of other cases for the Competition Appeal Court. Yes, I think of the eight cases in which I sat, I wrote four directly. I wrote most of the fifth, and as you know, you and I worked quite a lot together on, on the breweries case. Yes, and that was a joint. And, and that case, by the way, is now effectively set the law for many questions, as I understand it, in abuse of dominance and, and uh, 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 certainly vertical and horizontal, I mean, we have more accurate there. Yes. And then, and then finally, um, can I just ask you, um, your view about a specialist court and the issue of economics and its relationship to competition law and how you see that? I think one must uh, draw a distinction between what can be regarded as the procedural or jurisdictional aspects of the Competition Act and the substantive aspects. On the procedural and ju jurisdictional aspects, I think it's a fairly conventional process of statutory interpretation. And I think a distressingly large number of cases which have come to the tribunal and even the Competition Appeal Court have been concerned with those matters. When, it, uh, when one turns to the substantive issues, the prohibited conduct and merger assessment, one is dealing with concepts which are far more pregnant with economic ideas because by the time our Competition Act, for real, though I'm talking about the 1998 Act, was drafted, uh, there was a long history of jurisprudence in Europe and the United States, and our drafts people drew heavily on the evolving jurisprudence in those areas, so that when one talks about fixing a price or allocating a market, in the case of collusion, or when one talks about an excessive price being something which bears no reasonable relation to the economic value of goods, it is very difficult just to look at those provisions and say, well, I'm going to give them their ordinary meaning because they represent the tip of an iceberg of economic and legal jurisprudence um, uh, spanning a good number of years in Europe and in America. Thank you, JP. Commissioners, any question? Yes, Commissioner Singh. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chief Justice, and good, good afternoon, Judge. I think to the JP, we'll have to judge for ourselves. Uh, uh, just, just two questions. Uh, <laughs> I just want to know, uh, I, I see on my records here that you have uh, three reserve judgments at the time. Uh, one on the 25th, uh, the other on 27 July, and one on the 1st of August. Uh, has there any been new information that you can give us? They were all delivered in the first half of September. Good. Thank you very much. Commissioner Schmidt. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, in one of your articles, uh, you attach, or you make reference to on page four of your questionnaire, uh, a particular C, it says silk, um, why it should go. I remember you being asked extensively about it about four or five years ago with your nomination, with your interview. Uh, have you changed your view? Or um, I haven't changed my view. I think at that stage the Chief Justice said, well, we shouldn't talk about it too much because I think there was still litigation ongoing then. Um, I've, I've lost the legal battle and the battle for the hearts and minds of people in the legal profession. They, there seems to be no significant support for abolishing silk. So although my views haven't changed, and interestingly, in the context of competition law, I personally regard it as undesirable that one should have a system, even worse, one in which the president of the country is co-opted, which provides some sort of certification of the special merits of particular advocates, when in, 
all other professions and all other areas of economic activity, we trust the market to decide who they think um, is worthy of their custom. I see no place for it, but I've given up the fight. I don't see uh, any smile on this side. <laughs> <laughs> any other question, commissioners? Judge Davis? Judge, oh, thank you very much, uh, Judge Rogers. You're excused. Thank you.